back again with another video and today what we got going on is we are designing a set of wide body fenders for the Ferrari 458 how exciting is that now I know these 3d modeling videos that I put on my channel are getting pretty redundant but I had to make this one because I think this one's interesting to say the least because I've been doing a lot of this 3d modeling videos this will be the last one for a while Maybe not. If you guys like it, I'll make some more. But for now, this one's the last one because I'm kind of sick of doing these videos. I want to actually get out there and use tools and and do manual labor, you know? Nobody wants to do manual labor. Who are you kidding? I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Anyhow, let's get started. What nothing real can be threatened. Wow, that was just that was just so beautiful. All right, so the first thing we should do is draw our wheel well, and we're gonna use the circle tool. Make that a little bit bigger. Put it in position. We're gonna scale it, and the reason why we are scaling it is because we want to match the sides of the circle to the sides of the actual wheel well of the model. So if we scale it, we put it back in position and then what we can actually do now is we can up the point count on our circle turn on control points and then furthermore match it onto the wheel well of the model now I'm not gonna sit here and record during the entire duration of the, the modeling process I'm gonna end up speeding the video up but I'm gonna show you guys enough so that if you wanted to do the same thing that you have enough information to have a good starting point split this where it may split split yo this computer is lagging so much I'm gonna I'm gonna do something about it it ain't gonna be pretty now that we have our line let's position the line see how when we drew it it, it attaches right to the seaplane so we gotta drag it out here let me just analyze distance and we'll, we can get this is 70 millimeters which is about two and a half inches we're just gonna drag it out just a little bit more by the way, as a reference, when you're dealing with millimeters, 24.5, 25.4 is one e equals to one inch. So right here we have about four inches. And we're not going to get too exact because we're not that special, you know. We don't do things like that. We we MacGyver things around here. We, uh, we're not too pretentious, you know. We'll take a few L's here and there and that's fine with us. All right, so now that we have our wheel well, what we can do is we can offset it to match, again, to match the same exact thing. Um, so we're gonna offset. That lip is gonna be about 1.75, it might be two inches. Well, we're dealing with millimeters here. I, I really hate that. I, I, I hate that when, when I'm modeling. And you know what, let me go ahead and, and change the properties to inches. This is America, people. Let's not get too crazy. You guys do. You guys go by our standards. We don't go by your standards. You got to know who's who around here. All right, so let's offset our wheel well that we drew. Yeah, 1.75 is a good number. So as you can see, fucking it just doesn't end. Now that we have our wheel wheel curves drawn, we can go ahead and create the curves of the outer profile of the fender. And we're gonna do that by drawing curves and then we're gonna project it onto the existing fender so that we can use that as a curve to create uh, the fender. I'm pretty sure you didn't understand what I just said, so let me show you guys how to do it.
from the top view, we've drawn a line which will represent the top of the fender. So I'm going to project that onto the surface so you can clearly see there's a line that fits the contour of that fender. And that's important because we want the fender to fit. So that's our starting point. What we want is just this top line here. The next line we're going to do is the side of the fender. It goes in like that. And then turn this one real quick. We're going to put a little bend in it. Because like I said, always got to have a bend. We will not put a bend on that one. All right, let's project it. And now we have our curves for that. We grow shaded. We can highlight all of our lines. You kind of see the outline of what we're trying to do. And then the, la the last line we're going to get is this one here, which is fairly simple. And now that we have all of our contour lines that was projected onto the fender, I'm going to go ahead and hide the fender. I'm going to hide the entire car actually. Okay, so let's identify where our outer profile is going to be. So the top of the, f the wide body fender will be from here to here. So let's trim it. We're going to split this because this captured that little indent into the, the fender. We're going to get rid of that. We'll reconnect this manually and we're going to eyeball it. about right and then from the top I mean don't get any better than that we're gonna put a little a little thing thing in there that looks about good and then we're gonna rebuild it we're gonna join all of these and if you hit rebuild you can see it has 151 points and that's because it was projected onto a surface and Rhino being Rhino, it has to capture every little change in the contour. So we're going to simplify it as much as we can. And we're only going to turn it into an eight point curve. Hit preview just to make sure that the line doesn't deviate from the original too much, which it doesn't. And then hit OK. It's a line that we can actually use to create a curve network surface. And then we're going to do that for every other line that we need. I'm going to do that right now. So now that we have our outer profile, let me take a look at the picture and see what we have to do next in order to create the surfaces for this fender. So I'm going to open up this picture and we're going to compare. So we're going to draw a line from here to here. That's one of the lines that we have to draw. About right there. Hmm. Another line will go from here, somewhere right there, to there. Then, just to show you guys what I'm doing, from that edge, it's going to follow all the way back to the fender. Copy, paste, move it across, move it up, and this thing, this should follow this. If we did it right, we're going to move it up just a little bit. That looks about good. We're going to move this back just a little bit. We're going to recontour this line. And things might get complicated, but you just got to work them out. You figure it out piece by piece. And then we have that lower part of our split that because we don't need that anymore. Split, bam, bam. Where that lip is, there's a cutoff point here. And then it flows back this way. So, I mean, that's what we can start doing already. So we'll just eyeball it. Bam. And then bam. I think we're going to 
bring this at less of an angle. Sometimes I don't feel like talking and this is one of those times. But I gotta explain, I gotta narrate because people gotta learn and I gotta make that YouTube money. So now we can split our wheel wheel lines. At this point, this is where it actually ends. All right, so now that we've drawn all of our lines, let's go ahead and make surfaces from them. I'm gonna start with the wheel wheel. Hopefully all of our lines are on point and are all touching and that is good so far. We're gonna build the ones down here. Curve network and you can see their individual surfaces. That's what it takes to get the job done. Individual surfaces. We're rolling right now. From this point, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video all through the finishing of the rear fender and then I'll get back to you when I'm done. Why would the farmer put the plow in the ground in the spring if he couldn't see the vision of the harvest when the summer is finished? Is it possible to see the finished harvest? And the answer is yes. We do that simply by faith. Key phrase, faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. And that's how things exist. How did this hotel get here? Someone saw it while the property was vacant. You say, well, is it possible to see this hotel when it isn't here? And the answer is yes, of course. If somebody cannot see it when it is not here, then it will never be here. So it's possible to see things that don't yet exist. Interesting. When should you start building this hotel? This is a good question for your philosophical musings. When should we start building the house? When should we start? And here's the answer. As soon as it's finished. You wouldn't start building the house until you had it finished. If you just started laying bricks and somebody came around and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just laying bricks and said, what are you building? And you said, I have no idea. See, they'll take you away to a safe place. <laughs> so have you got that now? It's possible to finish something before you start. In fact, it would be a bit foolish to start until you had it finished. So human beings have this remarkable ability to finish something and then start it. We've heard the old expression, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Say, no, we have the ability to count our chickens long before they're hatched. Because we know, we have faith, we believe. We use the law of averages. There's, there's bound to be at least so many. Out of every dozen, out of every hundred, out of every fifty. So it's possible to see the end and then begin. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish and where you would like to go, the person you would like to be. And see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. See yourself there. See yourself in possession of. I was in business with Bob Cummings, the old movie star, for a while. He said, decide what you want and then act as if you already had it. And being an actor, he could give us a few tips on acting. Decide what you want and act as if it was already yours. Now, the reason we can act thinking that it's already ours is because not only can we vision the end results, we can also vision the beginning of making it real. So we don't start till it's finished, but it is possible for human beings to finish something before they start. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except humans seems to operate simply by instinct in the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices 
and listen to advice of something that might be better, he has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one. I discovered I was not a goose. <laughs> Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years? And jot this down. No. I'm back, and I just finished modeling the fenders, and I'm going to show you guys what they look like. So here in a shaded view, I'm going to introduce the fenders. Let me know what you guys think. Fenders are on. If I change the color of, uh, let's change it to like uh, this blue, so, just, so you guys can differentiate the fenders from the car. And then I will turn on a rendered view which you will be able to see a lot better and that's the vent rendered view I'm going to turn off the fenders off on from the front view off on and that's it I hope you guys learned a few things about 3d modeling and I'll see you guys next time. Let's get out of here.